Bristol Silence came about uh, with myself and a film studies tutor, a friend of mine, Norman Taylor. Uh, we both felt, I think, that, uh, that silent films weren't really being screened with, um, with any kind of creativity. They were sort of just being, being run out. It was the same films over and over again. You see Nosferatu, Cabinet of Dr Caligari and Metropolis usually. Uh, and beyond that, it would either be really obscure and there'd be an audience of six or so, um, but there wasn't any sense of um, celebration and fun around silent films. And I spoke to Norman about it and we had this idea of, of forming a society locally that would be interested in watching silent films and then kind of, in a way, lobbying art cinemas like Arnold Feeney and Watershed to screen films in a, in a creative way that was silent with um, excellent prints and with great musical accompaniments and run at the right speed so a way that people would get an opportunity to see silent films the way they were meant to be screened and experienced and to bring new audiences to silent film. Slapstick Silent Film Festival came about because we felt it was time to build audiences again and uh, we, we thought about comedy as being a universal medium that would interest people who hadn't seen a lot of silent films before. And now to our star of the evening, ladies and gentlemen, Paul Merton. Thank you very much indeed, everyone, but in many ways this evening isn't just about me. I'm thrilled, um, I'm, I'm thrilled for Bristol Silence, first of all, to see so many people here. Can I do a quick straw poll? How many people here have never been to see a silent screen, uh, silent comedy screened live on a big screen with a live orchestra? Oh, wow. Fantastic. Good. Well, you're in for a treat. That's great. I think silent comedy lends itself to, um, to being quite attractive to people in people's minds. I think if you run a, quite an obscure, dramatic silent film, you're not likely to get much of an audience. But if you start talking about the big big comics like Charlie Chaplin and uh, Keaton and Lloyd, people have heard of them even if they don't know their films and they're more likely to come out. So I spoke to the guy at Colson Hall and he said, no, we'd love to do that. I think it's a really eclectic thing. But he said, it's, it's, uh, I'm not sure how to gauge it because he said it's, it's unlike anything else we've ever done. It's got different elements of it. It's got a host, it's got mm. music, it's got three different musical uh, accompaniments and it's got silent film and it's got, uh, you know, um, it's got Merton presenting the films and stuff. So there's a whole range of things. And I, th I think it's, uh, he said, I'm not sure if it's a good thing, but he said he thinks it's great broad family entertainment. I mean, for, children, for families, children, the whole thing. What's wrong with it? Well, exactly. Nothing's wrong What's with it. What's wrong with it? But he kind of thinks hasn't already got. That's, that, I tell class. you what, that's quite radical. It is now. These right, days. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I feel yeah. like pushing the envelope. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Seriously. <Yeah. laughs> it, was, it, was, it was a few months ago we were. It must be close to a year ago now that we first started talking about the idea. Yeah. yeah. And the idea, maybe, of. Um, you know, of course, you know, when we see silent pictures, either there's, it's rare that there's a music track, you know, mm. which is a decent one that's survived on the tape or the print or whatever. So, uh, you know, if you're going to put these things on, it stands to reason you're going to have to think of something to back it, you know, yeah. either solo piano or whatever you decide. And uh, the idea came up that we could perhaps um, drag in some of the, the old mates here, the darts and the <laughs> We worked together before. We worked together before 20 years ago. <laughs> they're all spars, you know. And, uh, we, we worked out that some years ago in the 80s, I saw Paul... And, mm. and his brothers performing with darts, as was in the 80s, yep. uh, at yeah. the Astoria Theatre, Yakety Yak, where they were performing together with this kind of oh, yeah. music. Yeah. And it was through that, us talking about that and what a fantastic time that was, uh, and, and thinking about recreating something with that music and finding a suitable film, a silent film. It has to be a special kind of film that would work with this kind of music. But we found this, an Italian filmmaker's put together all the running sequences from Buster Keaton's mm. movies, edited those together in a, in a stream and this kind of music just works so smoothly with it. Um, really. A lot of purists in silent film wouldn't be keen on that really, they'd be thinking well you should have an established film and then find what music goes with the film. But I think in this case we were looking for something exciting and new and different. So the choices really came from 
Griff Fender having a look at the kind of music that he thought w would work with the film. So he spent some time with Paul McGann looking at the film, uh, thinking about his whole kind of repertoire of numbers that he's performed before, and wanted to find suitable tracks like the Cadillac Speedo is an excellent example of a song that they chose. Um, Ruby Baby is a number that uh, Paul McGann wants to perform. Another thing that uh, Griff and Paul and Den haven't performed together for 23 years, so there's a real worry about that. Real worry that um, you know how are they going to sound after so long? I think they're worried about that too. Um, so, but I've got every confidence in, in some ways that it's, it's original, it's different. And I think that they've, they've got a great enthusiasm um, about them. And they're a really nice bunch of people. So I'm sure it'll all come together on the night. No, I don't let this out of my sight. This is okay. half a life in here. Is it? OK. Only half a life? <laughs> or a half life. <laughs> Something radioactive, anyway. <laughs> Something about, I mean, I've seen a lot of people live. I've seen R.E.M. and Bruce Springsteen and The Who, and you know, I've seen a lot of performers live, but I remember those gigs I saw performing with darts. I think I only saw you with them twice. But just phenomenal live band. What a fantastic live act. Genuinely. Well, you won't get that anymore. One of the best. From well, us. Well, that's what I'm hoping. <laughs> That's why we brought you along. Yeah. yeah. No, well, I'm very aware that you're not. We're sort of, make, you know, we're keeping our fingers crossed that it's in the dark. <laughs> well, we'll look at. We've got a stage manager coming tomorrow who's going to help try and uh, the guy from Bristol Old Vic who's coming to help yeah. us know where to stand and that kind of thing. So hopefully that'll that'll firm up. But no, genuinely, what happened? Was this Ba 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 